The letter was posted July 10th, the day before the duel. When, when Theodore received it a few days later, did he know that Hamilton was dead? Would the news have somehow traveled faster than the mail? If so, the letter must have weighed a little heavier in his hand than it would have otherwise. In any case, he never responded, since there was no one to respond to. When earlier members of the family encountered the letter, they could see its value to history, for several added sharply underlined notations on the back before they passed the letter down to the next generation. All conveyed the same message. This letter must be preserved. That was the start of it. To be honest, I didn't think, my God, I've got to write about this. It was just one of those tidbits a writer tucks away for later or for never, as the case may be. But my memoir came out and I wrote a couple of other books, one of them on Whitey Bulger, another great Federalist. <laughs> and I was starting to get itchy, a little bored with the present, as if this was all there was and nothing had come before. The past was like this glittering pool. With the Sedgwick book, I had come down to the shore, and now I felt I was ready to take a swim. Having done the family memoir, I had a feel for the past. I thought I was ready to take on those harumphing Federalists in their buckled shoes. I've done many things, but I'm a journalist at heart, a journalist with novelistic inclinations. To be honest, I wasn't so interested in history per se as in the stories that collectively make up the past. Stories of large personalities and dramatic conflict, of character expressed through action. And I wouldn't mind an almost Jamesian depth to the psychological dimension of my protagonists. I've always felt that psychology got short shrift in history, as if great men weren't a swirl of conflicting emotions like everyone else, and their deeds didn't come out of these depths as much as by historical circumstance. If history was a mystery, to me it isn't a whodunit, but a why done it? Initially, as I looked around for a historical subject, I was intrigued by the notion of political violence, politics turned personal, lives on the line, an assassination, perhaps? Something explosive? Kennedy, Lincoln, McKinley, Garfield, they'd all been done to death, one might almost say. Terrible to sort through history this way, deciding what stories deliver a bang. But then I remembered the letter, the duel. Oddly, for all the supposed fame of the duel, it wasn't much of a sharp memory for anyone I consulted. More a matter of hazy familiarity, less a fact than a factoid. If people remembered it at all, it was usually from that Got Milk commercial. Yeah. A silly bit where someone is called by a radio contest and asked who shot Hamilton, but can't get out the words Aaron Burr because his mouth is too full of peanut butter. You know that one? Say yes, please. Uh, um, and he doesn't got milk to wash it down. I can't tell you how many people told me about this. I had not seen it. Uh, um, that's how low Hamilton and Burr had sunk. <laughs> but this was before the famous musical, which has proved such a great career move for both men. Uh, uh, honestly, many people weren't exactly sure who killed whom, let alone why or where or how. But then there was this essential publishing question that all writers face. Had the duel been done? It was obviously covered in all the biographies of the two men, but to my surprise, there had been no good book about the duel itself. Ron Chernow had done a masterful job with Hamilton, but that was just Hamilton. The best biography of Burr by Milton Lomask was about 30 years old. I was intrigued. Two powerful, fascinating men from the dawn of the nation joined forever in an act of appalling violence. This had possibilities. Oddly, it wasn't until then that I remembered Hamilton's letter to Theodore, and it seemed just then as if it was actually a letter to me to find and read and ultimately to explain. I've come to think that there are wormholes in history, little magical shoots that connect the present to the past with extraordinary immediacy. That did it. This was the book for me.